So we have uh, Hanukkah coming up tomorrow night. I'm sure everyone is aware. And uh, so it's a good time to start talking about Hanukkah. Hilchot Hanukkah. There are many, I uh, should have started speaking a while ago. But anyway, there, there are many things which come up, many questions which come up regarding uh, lighting Hanukkah candles. So the Gemara tells us three of the most famous words in the Gemara that the mitzvah of Hanukkah is mitzvah ner ishu beito, the candle of a person in one's home. Clearly, there is a connection between the mitzvah of Hanukkah and the bayit. The question is, how far does it go? To what extent? And questions, very common questions which come up. What happens if a person is not at their home over one of the nights of Hanukkah or for the entire night of Hanukkah? What happens if a person is in a situation in which they're in a place which is not classified as a home at all? So this year, very common question for many people. Lots of chayalim are out there in the in the Shetach, in a place where there is no home necessarily, would they have to light Hanukkah candles? How could they light Hanukkah candles? I actually saw there's a booklet that's been republished. Fascinating. It's a booklet that was put out by Yeshiva Takotel 50 years ago, of Yaakov Katz, uh, with the uh, Piskar Acha for Chayalim. It was originally written during the, uh, during the Yom Kippur War, different uh, Piskei Halacha for Hanukkah, of what, uh, what the Chayalim should do. And that booklet has now been republished because it's very relevant again for those uh, there are some changes, some additions as well so these are some of the questions which are discussed in terms of uh, you're out there, a soldier is out in a place where there is no home, there's no building, it's just out in a tent or open area, whatever it is would one light a candle, could you light uh, use electric lights to, 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 to light it, if it's impossible to use a candle, what about lighting and turning off it's dangerous, etc. So, so, so many questions which come up me more more practical and more like mindset for people that are sitting here is in terms of so you have a home but sometimes either a person goes away so a person goes away for shabbat or you go away one of the nights you're in a hotel so if you're staying in the hotel then the night that you're there that is classified as your home for that night what happens the next night however you start off in the hotel but then you go back home where do you light what about if a person is traveling this is a very common question when a person is traveling from uh, one place to another, one of the nights, sometimes you may miss the time for lighting candles in both, in both locations, what do you do, etc. So, that now. So first of all, in terms of the question of whether, whether a home as such is, is really required for the, uh, for the mitzvah of Adlakat uh, Nehachanuk. So the Gemara tells us that there's a bracha. We know there are three, when we light candles, three brachot on the first night, two brachot every other night. We have the bracha of Adlik uh, Nehachanuk, and the bracha of Shasan Yisim Lavoteinu, and the Gemara says that that bracha also uh, applies what's called Birkat Roe, that you have a situation where a person who is not going to be lighting candles themselves, a person may be able to say the bracha upon seeing uh, the Hanukkah candles which were lit. This is interesting and strange because we don't find this for most mitzvot. Most mitzvot, you don't say a bracha of Alnatilat Lulav if you see somebody else uh, taking a lulav. You don't say it, right? Um, but uh, but so, so Tosfor asked the question over there where the Gemara introduces this concept of it says why by Hanukkah we have something which we don't have by other mitzvot that you say if you see somebody else who's fulfilled the mitzvah somebody else has lit the candle you could say a bracha again practically speaking now it's very it's pretty uncommon for, to actually say the Be'katara'eh because we would say it only applies in a situation where one is not lighting and no one is lighting for them and they're not going to light but, but the concept itself exists. Tosfot says two reasons why it exists. Number one, he says, because, how, because of how precious the miracle was, that it's this is something uh, extra special. The Rambam also writes regarding Mitzvah Hanukkah, Mitzvah Chavivahi Ad Me'od, which is again unusual in the language of the Rambam. What is it that is so precious about this Mitzvah? But that is one answer Tosfot gives. And his second answer, he says, because of those people, Misha Enlobayit, somebody who doesn't have a home. So you would say, well, why, what's the problem? Why can't they just lie to wherever they are? So no, this, the understanding seems to be, and seems to be the understanding from Rashi as well. Rashi also says that somebody who's not uh, at home, he says, or well, somebody who's on a sfina, somebody who's on a ship, they would not light, they would not uh, light uh, candles. So we see from there, it seems to be, and many, many 
uh, of the contemporary post scheme go along with this as well, that the lighting of the candles would only apply inside a home. So if you're out, uh, again, Rashi said a ship. So the Marasham explains, because the ships they were talking about in those days didn't have a, didn't have a ceiling, didn't have a roof. You're completely out in the open. But he says, if you're in a place, you have your cabin or you have your quarters. It could be the post can talk about somebody who's on a train or a, or, or a carriage or something overnight that might be considered a home for that for that purposes but it needs to be needs to be a home there is an opinion amongst the uh, contemporary bosque in the Sicilia, who says no a person it's there's a chobat gavra the person has an individual obligation to light Hanukkah candles you're somewhere where you don't have a home you would still light anyway but uh but but but, but most of the bosque say no it has to be has to be in a home so in this booklet that i mentioned in terms of uh in terms of Chayalim, if they're out somewhere and there really is no uh, uh you know shelter or no you literally out, just out, out in a field somewhere, there would not be, uh, there would not be a place to uh, light Hanukkah candles. If they have a tent or a certain, uh, certain size, it goes into details in terms of how big it needs to be and how many walls and ceiling, etc., for it to be, considered, uh, to be considered a home. Okay, so that is, that is one point. The second point is, assuming you have a home or you're sleeping in a room or whatever, wherever it is, the question is, which is your home? What is considered your home for the night of Hanukkah, right? So when a person's traveling, person goes somewhere else. Sometimes you have uh, families get together on uh, one of the nights, whatever it is, everybody goes to someone's house. It's not your house. It's not where you're sleeping, but you go there for a meal and you're there. Would that, that's a home? Would you light the, light the candles there? So the Mishnah Bura actually talks about this case. Mishnah Bura brings us to, to extreme cases in terms of defining which is our home and which is uh, 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 where, where one would like. So first of all, this is in Siman Tafresh Ein Zayn. Tafresh Ein Zayn Shulchan Aruch talks about the din of Achsanai. Achsanai is somebody who is uh, a guest somewhere else. Somebody who's a guest in somebody else's home, sleeping uh, over there. The Gemara tells us that the din of an Achsanai, somebody who's not in their own home, either if there is somebody, if the person is married and somebody, your wife, is, is, is at your house and is lighting candles there inside your home, even though you're not there, you would fulfill the mitzvah in that way. And if not, if there's nobody at home, uh, then, then uh, what's called mishtatef pruta that the person needs to uh, needs to give a little bit of money to contribute towards the uh, oil, the candles at the person, the place where they are staying, and they would be included in the lighting of that person as well. That's in the place where they're uh, where they're sleeping. Does your, so, home, does, does your home also have to have a light in that condition? If you're in a hotel and you're staying there for a night or two. So does your house also have to have a light in the window? If there's no one there, it's not. No, no, if there's no if, if there's no one there, if there's no one there tonight, then uh, then uh, that's uh, no, it's not necessary. Um, but but it says over here. So so the Mishnah Bram mentions the following case. He says he writes uh, So he says somebody who is happens to be on the night. He's at somebody else's home and he's having a he's having a meal there. But you have your own home that you're going to go back to. So you light candles at your own home. Just the fact that you're sitting and having a meal, you went to a Hanukkah party in somebody else's house. It's not your home, it's their home, it's somebody else's. The fact that you go there for a meal, that doesn't turn it into, into your home. You have to go home to light. That is one case. In the Biyar Alakha, he brings the other, the other extreme case, which is the following. He says, uh, he says, we wrote in the Mishnah Bura that somebody who just goes for one meal, uh, etc. He says, <laughs> You see, this is not a new thing that people go away or go to their parents for Chagim, whatever it is, uh, or, or, or to their children or whatever it may be. He says, if you go, your entire family, and you uh, move in, you move in with your father or you move in with your in-laws over the eight days of Chanukah, since you are eating and sleeping there for the entire uh, the entire eight days, even during the day, here and there, you go back to your house to have a meal, whatever it may be. It's the house where you are staying in, and you're eating and sleeping there at night, so you've moved in somewhere else. That is now considered your home for the duration of Hanukkah. There's no, there's nobody at, uh, nobody at your house who you're lighting for. That's not uh, because okay. So in other words, these are the two extremes. This is one, just going, just the fact that you uh, spent a few hours 
is somewhere else, that does not make it turn that into your home. On the other extreme, if you go the entire time of Hanukkah, you moved into another house, that becomes your house for the time of Hanukkah. What happens, what happens in the middle? What happens if for one night, for two nights, for part of the time you are staying somewhere, which is not your, which is not your permanent home? And so the question comes up in a number of, uh, a number of ways. Number one, let's say the beginning of the night of Hanukkah, a person starts off at their own house. I'm, I, I'm at my house. The first uh, four hours of the night, for whatever it is, I'm at home. But then I'm leaving. Then I'm going. I'm going to. Uh, I'm, I'm going to sleep somewhere else. Do I light at home before I leave, or do I have to light in the next place where I go? Second case, like I mentioned before, person goes away and sleeps out one of the nights. Common case for Shabbat. Person goes out and sleeps. Uh, goes to a hotel for Shabbat. Let's say. So on Friday night, or Friday afternoon, clearly you light the candles in the hotel because that is where that is what's considered your home for that time and for that uh, for that night. What happens on Motzei Shabbat? On Motzei Shabbat, at the time of candle lighting, I'm still in the hotel, which was my home for the previous 24 hours. That's now considered my home, but I'm going, but I'm going back later. So do I light at that time at the hotel, or do I light later on? I Meaning, how do we determine what is considered the person's home or not? And that would that would apply. That would be the question, not just on Shabbat or any of the nights. So there are two ways two ways of looking at this. What determines? What is one's home home for the night? Clearly, the fact that where you are sleeping, and where you are staying, that is a that is a factor, and that's a primary factor in terms of considering it one's home. But does that mean that if there's a place, if there's a home where I've slept, just because of the fact that I that I that that, that I slept there already, that has now caused a connection, I guess you would say, between me and this place, and that's my home, and therefore uh, the next night, it's still since yesterday was considered my home, it's still considered my home, and I could like that. That's one way of looking at it. Or you say, no, Dafka, that night, wherever you are sleeping that night, that is considered your home. And that's what makes it, that's what's dependent on the lighting the Hanukkah candles. So if we say the first way, th this would be the case, somebody goes away for Shabbat. If we say the first way, then I would say, say Shabbat, I could still light candles in the hotel, even though I'm going back and sleeping at home that night. If I say the second way, I say, no, since Motzei Shabbat, I'm going to be at home, then that's where I, I have to wait until I get back. And, uh, and, and that's where I can lie. So Lemay said that the truth is that there are opinions that hold, as you can imagine, there are those who hold it, go both ways. And, um, and essentially what the Puskin would say is like this, that oftentimes it happens. If, if wherever I am, if I've been, I've been there the previous night and I've been sleeping in, that is now considered my home. I'm going back home later. That will also be considered my home. So it depends what time, what time it is and where you are and where you're going. If you're only going to get back very, very late, and it's certainly after the time of it's after the time of uh, many hours after nightfall. There's no one out, out and about. Then it would be better to light before you leave, to light in the place where you are already, but that's been your home. If you're going back and it's relatively early and you could, uh, uh, you could still manage to get back home and then light there, so then, so then light uh, in the place where, where you go back to. But again, the more interesting case that comes up, we'll talk about this maybe tomorrow, in terms of somebody who's traveling, traveling overseas or traveling between time zones, and then what happens, and then it's not always... Uh, not always as, as clear cut, but uh, we'll get to that.